morning to you and thank you so much for being with us. If you're in the parking lot, we're so glad that you're here. If you're watching online, either through Facebook or YouTube, thank you for taking some time as we come together today in the first Sunday of Advent to spend some time in worship and praise to our Lord. So let's begin, if we could, by singing a great Christmas hymn, Joy to the World. And we'll do all four verses of Joy to the World. Join us as we sing together. Praises and our prayers. 
And I know there are many requests in our church, in our community. Uh, and I know those of you at home, you have some special requests and prayers that you need to lift at this time only. So I'm going to ask that you come before the Lord and offer up a time of praise. And then take your burdens and lay them at his feet. We are so very thankful that we are out of quarantine and all doing well. Uh, but we know a lot of other folks are still do dealing with some of these issues. And so let's continue to pray for God's healing hand, for God's direction, and for always his mercy and forgiveness. Let's pray. <laughs> stillness of this moment, we truly come to thank you that we can <clears throat> worship, that we can come and pray, that we can lift our burdens before you without fear of persecution, Lord, because we know it's not that way everywhere. And Lord, as we gather here today, as a hurting community, nation, and world, we are praying for your healing hand, we are praying for your wisdom to be imparted to those who are doing research and for those who are on the front lines taking care of those who are sick. Lord, we also pray that as we go into this time of year, we know that this is a very difficult time of year for many folks. Even if we removed COVID from the picture, as much as we like to think that this holiday season is joyous for all of us, it's not for some. And so today, Lord, we pray for your tender mercies to be upon them. But Lord, we also want to stop for a moment and realize as we're entering into this season, the celebration for us is the celebration of hope. Prophecies fulfilled. Promises guaranteed. The gift of salvation the assurance of the promise of the forgiveness of our sins. Gracious God, help us to have tender hearts full of mercy and compassion and grace for others as you have done for us each and every day. Lead us now as we continue in our time of worship. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our next hymn that you'll see there on your list is one that was written in the 1940s. It's been around a long time, tends to be a favorite for many this time of year. Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. Would you join us as we praise him?
prayer that he will shine on, on us, in us, and around us, and that we too will be that avenue for the power of the Lord to shine. As we've said, this is the beginning for us of the Advent season. And I sent out a really interesting article to our folks this week that uh, sometimes we as Baptists may be a little slow coming to the party. And, and in many of the Baptist churches, Advent is not something that's practiced. But more and more Baptist churches are beginning to do that. And having grown up in other denominations in different parts and in different times of my life, I've always experienced the season of Advent in church and look forward to it because it's a, a great reminder for me of what we're about to do when it comes to the celebration of Christmas. And I'm all about reminders. I'm all about things that, that help keep us focused. And so as we begin to think about this season of Advent, where we celebrate the coming of our Lord, we want to stop for just a moment and reflect. One of the traditional things that we do in our churches during the season is we light a candle. Each one has a theme. And of course, this week it's hope. We want to be thankful for the hope that we have through our faith and trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so today, now, I'll take just a moment to light that first candle, the hope candle, that signifies hope to a darkened world. Father in heaven, we thank you for hope. Lord, we thank you for the promise that has been fulfilled. But now as we move into this time of celebration, we want to be reminded, Father, that prophecies and promises were given so that we could have hope. And then they were fulfilled as a guarantee. For this day, Lord, we thank you. Lead us now as we continue to praise and to pray. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, thou long expected Jesus. studies is that we've done this character biographical sketch, if you will. We did the original 12 uh, apostles, and now we're doing 12 amazing women from the Bible. And it's been really interesting to go back and to study, especially those from the Old Testament, as we have looked at, at their story and how they have long awaited the, the birth and the delivery of the Messiah and, and the coming of the Messiah. And so as we've moved into this, this, this passion that people have even before Jesus came, because they knew the promise was there. They knew that the Messiah was coming. 
And with anticipation, they look so forward to it. I know we've often talked about this time of year, how you look into the eyes of children around the Christmas season. And you can see this anticipation. You can see this hope in their eyes and their faces. They walk into a room with this Christmas tree. If there's boxes of presents there, they, they just they get excited. I know some adults that are sort of like that. The one that was playing the keyboard just now gets that way every time she walks into a room with a Christmas tree. It's that sense of, of joy and excitement, of hope. So today I want us to go back into the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 9. Let's talk about the promise that was given so many years ago in anticipation of the birth of our Savior. Chapter 9, verse 1. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, but in the future he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. So right off the bat, Isaiah is giving this, this amazing picture that the power of God has done some mighty things, humbling the lands. But in the future, by way of Galilee, by way of the Sea of Jordan, there's a promise. Peace. Peace will come. We have to keep that in mind. Verse 2, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the, shadow, the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's feast, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boots used in battle and having every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning. It will be fuel for the fire. So Natali was this northern part of Israel. And the Lord's boy, boy at home is going to be this place of the beginning of his public ministry. His first coming brought to light and his second coming is going to bring joy. Now think about that. His first coming was to bring light into the world. The second coming will be to bring joy. I love verse 6, and so many songs revolve around verse 6. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. When I was a junior in high school, I had a music teacher and we lived in Massachusetts who was working on his doctorate and so for his doctoral thesis project he had to bring together enough singers to conduct and present the entire Handel's Messiah and he had to do it in, the, in a day he had to get everybody together and so there were four different choirs that he worked with and I was in part of one of those choirs and so we all went out to this church out in the rural part of Massachusetts and we we practiced a couple of times and then they set aside a day for us to come and to sing and all together, there were roughly 60 voices. And the professor was presenting this presentation, and he had all of his teachers there who were going to grade this project. But I will never forget the spirit of worship that sort of took over, because we, we knew we were there for an academic reason. We were there for a long time, by the way. If you've never done the whole thing, it's long. But when those voices began to celebrate and to sing, it became this sense of worship. And we began to sing about the promise of the Messiah. And you couldn't help but have hope and joy in your heart. As you heard all of these voices sing. So as Isaiah says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. So that first advent, the first coming, describing Jesus who will come and Humanity, even in his deity. But then the next couple of verses, we'll talk about that second advent, the second coming. The government will be upon his shoulders. He'll have the power to reign as king of kings. A 
and Lord of Lords. Then the verse goes on to say, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Now the word wonderful translated from its original Greek here in this text is used as a noun, stating who he is. It's not just a description, but it's who he is. Wonderful. He is wonderful. And the word counselor refers to wisdom and governing and overseeing how things are to be done. So in his wonderment, he will govern and do things the right way. He'll be a mighty God, as it first continues, meaning an omnipotent and supreme ruler. An everlasting father, which means he'll be the father of eternity. Conferring onto all who will believe the gift of eternal life. He'll be the prince of peace. The only one who will bring long and lasting eternal peace into a troubled world. How many of us this day long for peace? Long for that sense of knowing your faith and trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. You had this eternal sense of hope because you know that someday on his return, we'll find peace, everlasting peace, eternal peace. But Christians, until that day, our mission as part of the church, as a part of the bride of Christ, is to live a life of peace. To make sure that the glory and the, the, the Lord, the light of the Lord, shines in us and around us as we live our lives. Verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. It's not going to be a political party that's going to bring this sense of eternal peace. It's going to be the reign of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he will reign, almighty, and he will accomplish this. While your Bible is in your lap or in your hand or your Bible app is open, look with me now to Mark chapter 13. Flip over to... New Testament. For now we've seen Isaiah's prophecy of the power of Christ and his coming and the purpose for his coming. And we need to get excited about it, but we also need to be ready for it. Mark 13, beginning in verse 33. Be on guard, be alert, for you don't know what time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house, he puts the servants in charge, and each one with an assigned task. He tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, don't let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Watch. <coughs> Church, a reminder for us today is that we have a sense of hope. And just like those who have gone before us until the Lord returns, those who will come after us, we need to be ready. We need to be on guard. We need to be alert. Make sure our hearts are in the right place. And then be willing to share the hope that we have with those around us who need to hear the good news. And the promises of Jesus Christ. I think it is so wonderful that this time of year we begin to see people doing all kinds of, of kind gestures for each other. They're, they're, they're reaching out and they're doing wonderful things for each other. And sometimes I stop and think, man, if we could just do that the rest of the year. And not just wait until Christmas. Because that's our challenge. If we have this incredible sense of hope, if we have this incredible promise of what Jesus Christ is going to do for us, we have the good news. We need to share that good news with the world that needs to hear it. And 
And so we want the world to hear that our hope is in the coming of Jesus Christ. And he came once. He fulfilled that prophecy. And great news, folks, he is coming again. He's coming again. Are you ready? Have you put your faith and trust truly in the Son of God? I pray that you have today. And I pray that you'll begin this search as we move into this Advent season leading up to Christmas that we take some time each week to prepare our hearts. I sent an Advent guide around this week via email to our folks and just to encourage them to take some time each week to think about what this week means as we now work towards the celebration of the coming of our Savior. We have this entire month to prepare our hearts. Now I know there's a lot of other things going on with festivities that take place this time of year, although due to the circumstances of the pandemic, many of those have been changed. But that doesn't mean we don't prepare our hearts. That doesn't mean that we can't be with out in some glorious anticipation of what this season really means. I have hope because I know that Jesus Christ came and gave his life for me. And in his willingness to become that sacrifice, I have the opportunity to walk daily through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit with an almighty God. I know that with a repentant heart, I can lay my burdens and my sins at his feet, and I no longer have to carry those burdens. I can leave them there. And I know Jesus was willing to go to the cross because he loves you and me. So yes, church, we should have hope. And we should celebrate that hope during this time of year. Let's pray together, please. Gracious God, again, we just come before you to thank you for Allowing us to have this time that we can come and worship. Lord, we thank you for the promise of hope. As Isaiah gave this prophecy. And then we see throughout the reading of the New Testament that that prophecy is fulfilled. And we have the hope that you're coming again. So until that day. Lord, let us celebrate the hope that's within us. Let us celebrate the knowledge that we have that the prophecies and the promises have been fulfilled once and will be again. Lord, we love you and we just want to praise you today. Lord, there may be someone here tonight or here today that's listening that just, they need a sense of hope. Something's missing in their life. Lord, I pray that you begin to just massage your heart and help them to realize that first and foremost, we need that relationship with you. To be able to walk daily with you in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as Christians, Lord, we celebrate this season just as they celebrated many different types of festivals throughout the Bible. Each one having to deal with the power of God, we celebrate this season, the power of God brought us a Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray these things. Amen. I pray that in your heart right now, you've had the opportunity to open your heart and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no greater gift that you can give your family than for them to know that your faith and trust is in Jesus that you have accepted this eternal gift. It's amazing. I pray that you'll begin to seek him in your heart. That you'll pray, Lord, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. And let me walk daily in the power and the presence of the Spirit. For those of us who are Christians, I hope that this time of year renews your sense of excitement about the joy of your salvation. We need to be excited about what Jesus has done for us 
We need to be excited about the promise of hope and share that promise. Won't you join me? Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. continue to live out this week that we may do all things that we can to <clears throat> share our hope with those around us, especially those around us who are in need. Lord, there are many in our community right now that need your, your healing touch, who need a special spiritual encouragement from you, Lord, who need your strength and power. Lord, we pray that your will be done in their lives and that we might have the opportunity to be your hands and feet to go and to do for you. It is in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray these things. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you this week. Celebrate 